people often ask me. What are you doing here? When I tell them. It's spoiler time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's finally time for some more spoilers. Throne of a Drain coming out soon. A little bit more than two weeks, I think. We got some good cards today. We got some bad cards. Some ugly cards even. And I hope you're prepared with your favorite beverage because we're gonna get through them all. I'm, yeah, well, I've taken out some comments that were kind of shit, so you won't miss them anyways. Questing Beast. Two colorless and two green. Now this... It could be a good card. Let's have a look at it. Vigilance, Death Touch, Haste. That's pretty sweet. A 4-4 body for 4 is not, you know, super exciting or anything, I wouldn't say. Uh, especially not in green. Uh, Questing Beast can't be blocked by creatures with power 2 or less. This is very good. We already have a creature, though, which is cheaper than this, which costs 3 mana, which is absolutely no play. A 5-4. For 3 mana. Uh, it doesn't have haste, though. Haste adds a lot to this card, honestly. That's really a lot. Then there's a, quite a unique ability here. Combat damage that will be dealt by creatures you control can't be prevented. There's not many ways right now to prevent combat damage. There is uh, some cards which uh, have fog effects, which prevents all combat damage from all creatures this turn. Uh, and then there's a blue-white planeswalker, which can prevent combat damage from a creature, but there's very, very few effects like that. Maybe that's foreshadowing that there might be more effects like that in the future. Maybe. Anyways. Whenever Questing Beast deals combat damage to an opponent, it deals that much damage to target Planeswalker that player controls. So here I think we have the clause which makes this card good, in my opinion. <laughs> uh, because otherwise... If it didn't have this set of abilities, it would be difficult for it to attack in to get something done. And that's kind of the problem. Whenever a creature costs 4, you kind of expect it to do something the turn it comes into play. So if it doesn't have haste, it kind of needs to have some kind of ability that it does something. Uh, else, you know, raw stats is not going to do anything. We know that because uh, there's like a 10-10 for 5, for instance, in green, which has never ever seen <laughs> play a single time. Unless, you know, you're in some janky, weird deck. So stats alone is not good enough. At 4 mana, every card needs to do something when it comes into play. And this card actually does something, because it does have haste. Uh, so haste and can't be blocked by creature power to less, which is very good, because you can get past all small creatures. Like, in my deck I often run, like, Fabulous of Callus Dismissal, but it's also all these mana-producing dorks, like Lawn or Elves. Uh, uh, Anything. <laughs> Anything that produces mana, it can usually get by, which is very good. Because those are usually the creatures that are down on the board right now. There's going to be knights also. Uh, remember that the vampires are going to rotate, so we're not going to see them. Uh, then we have the mono red creatures, which is probably going to dodge like all of them. Uh, and what is very relevant is that it's. it seems like this card is designed to be good, in my opinion, when you look at it. like It's good against essentially every deck right now. I mean, it's not amazing against any deck, but it's very... It's solid against most decks, I would say. So, against Mono Red, it has 4-4 four, four stats, so it needs 2 removal to get killed. It can attack in immediately, and since it has Vigilance, it can also block anything that they might want to return in with. It can deal damage to a Planeswalker, which... I mean, Mono Red doesn't run too many Planeswalkers. Uh, they usually... If they run a Planeswalker, they run, like, one. Uh, the Chandra... The Chandra thing, which draws you cards, they sometimes run. Um, but it's pretty decent against them, and then if you look at something like an Esper kind of deck, it's probably pretty decent against those, because even though they might have like hero tokens and stuff like that, or they might have an elite guard mage or something, those are not going to be able to block the questing beast. So the questing beast will go in immediately and kill off whatever planeswalker they have. Uh, I think it's a little bit unfortunate that this has 4 power and not 5, because a lot of planeswalkers, if you go plus with them, will have 5 loyalty. So for instance, uh, the small Teferi, Teferi Time Raveler, for instance, you can dodge the questing beast by going plus with it. Um, the small Chandra, uh, the new Oko that's going to be very relevant, I think. Uh, see a lot of play, probably. Goes up to 6 loyalty, so it can't kill that. Uh, but it will be very fast down on the board. I mean, green, we don't have Lawn Elves. We won't have Lawn Elves uh, when the set rotates, but we will still have access to the Gilded Goose, for instance. This probably goes very well in some kind of blue-green something deck, because blue-green seems to be very... Simic seems to be very strong. Uh, it's strong right now, and it might be, get even stronger. Um, 
And what other types of deck should we think about? Yeah, it's pretty decent against control, pretty decent against aggro. And also since that death touch, even if it's like big creature aggro, it can still do something. So it still seems like they've kind of safe guarded with this card. It should be good. Uh, but never amazing, because the stats aren't amazing, uh, is what I think. So yeah, I think this is a solid card. It will probably be... The thing is, this legendary, so it maybe won't be that expensive, because you probably only run one or two in your deck, I think. Uh, depending on what deck it is, though. But it seems like a very solid card. Seems good. And it seems like Wizards wanted it to be good. That's why they put in so much text. They're like, but if you're against a control deck, then you need to have this. Well, if you're against an aggro deck, you need to have this. And then just put everything on the card. Well, now it has to be good. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Wizards. Uh, thank you for a good green creature. Ooh. Just jump into the next. Sweet, sweet creature right here. Rankle. Master of Pranks. I have to <laughs> adjust this. Flying Haste, whenever Rankle Master Prank steals combat damage to a player, choose any number. Each player discards a card. Okay, you can choose any number. So you can choose all of them, if you want to, it seems like. To me, at least. Uh, but it affects both players. Each player discards a card. Each player loses one life and draws a card. Each player sacrifices a creature. So this card I very, very, very much like, I must say. Uh, because this card... It's very reminiscent. There, there were a lot of cards in the past which had all these effects. Uh, it was like a very good two mana card that I used to play, for instance, where both players sacrifice. I think it was a land, a creature, a card from the hand or something like that. Uh, and that card could really ruin decks. Uh, and I really like these effects where you have to sacrifice yourself, so you go down to very minimal resources, but the entire deck is built around surviving on minimal resources. Like, imagine having this with a new card from M20, uh, it was like 2 mana and it exiles a card from your opponent's hand. And then you, on your turn 4, go into Rankle and you sacrifice that creature and you make them discard another card because you don't care about discarding cards, because maybe you can even return something from your graveyard, you can get some kind of benefit from that. Uh, maybe the middle one, each player loses one life and draws a card, will probably only be used by you if you have some kind of discard card, so that can use that thing, he draws a card, but maybe it's tapped out or something, and then you immediately discard whatever he drew. Uh, but it seems like a very good kind of top end in a strategy like that, and you don't need to discard when he goes in. I really like that you can select here with the modes. Um, will he be any good though? His stats are horrible, 3-3. Three, three. He does have haste, uh, which of course and he needs to deal combat damage. If something is blocking him in the air, you won't get this effect off, unfortunately. And there's a lot of flyers, like ooh, double, what up? Blue white flyers. <laughs> I don't want to say ooh, we flyers, but that sounds weird. Uh, sounds weird. Blue white flyers and stuff like that. And some elementals that fly. There's a couple of things which fly still that can block Mr. Rankle, Master of Pranks. But I think this is a fun card, honestly. Um, it's hard to say how good this will be. Horrible stats. Mm, we don't have full support for this archetype yet. There's very few cards which support this archetype, and I love this archetype so much. And it's like, in my opinion, this is like what mono black should be. But I think we have too few cards in standard right now to make it happen. You can only make these kinds of decks it feels like in like legacy right now. Um, so we'll see. But I, if we can play Rankle Master of Pranks, I would be very, very happy. <laughs> Next card, Shambling Suit. Three colorless. Uh, power is equal to the number of artifacts or enchantments you control. And or. Note that it's and or. Uh, and it counts itself, because it's not other enchantments or artifacts. Okay. So it's a 1 3 for 3, which of course is, you know, very, very horrible. But I think that this card, weirdly enough, it's a bold size but it might see play. I know it seems underwhelming and that these cards never ever work. I know. I know, but there's two things that this card has going for it. First of all, it costs three. Usually these cards always cost four for some reason. <laughs> like when you have these type of effects, like when you get some potential for having a lot of uh, power on the creature, it usually costs four. And uh, as I said, a four mana thing has to do something when it comes into play. That's usually where these cards in the past have failed, I think. But for three mana, it might do something. 
might do something. I mean, especially with all, it counts the food, it counts, there's a lot of new artifacts and enchantments coming into the set, and if those cards are cards you want to play anyways, I mean, this card might quickly become a, I don't know, a 8-3 or something, because you have so many artifacts. Maybe you have a way of, like, putting out a lot of artifacts and, or a lot of food or something, and this could see play. Uh, I mean, yeah, initially it seems horrible, but it might. Depending on what cars you see. I have, I have a dream! Hope that we might see Shambling Suit, but I think it's a cool idea, but yeah. Next card. <laughs> Silver Flame Ritual. Three colorless and one white. Put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. Oh, why did I keep this? This is horrible. If at least three white mana was spent to cause this card, gives you control again, Bidlands. Yeah, we all had better cards than this, uh, so this will never see play. <laughs> I'm sorry. Forgot about removing that card. Uh, slaying fire, two colors, one red. Instant. Slaying fire is three damage to any target. Adamant. If at least three red mana was spent to cast this spell, it is four damage. Is this playable, you ask? Most cards that we have now are better because they have some version of which we can play for one mana, like Wizards Lightning and Skewer the Critics. It seems like this is too weak, but the Option of dealing 4 damage instead might just be so good that some decks want to run it. Especially if there's a lot of like 4 toughness creatures, which you have seen. Uh, like, they're, they're printing more and more 4 toughness creatures now. It seems like at least. Uh, so it might be very relevant to deal that 4 damage and maybe you want to, you know, deal a little bit more damage with your burn spells. Probably not. But, yeah, I shouldn't, you shouldn't, they're done. <laughs> I can't speak. You shouldn't discount this card, like, it could be. Uh, it, it could be decent. Circle of Loyalty, though. Four colors, two white. A mythic. This spell costs one less to cast for each knight you control. Creature you control get plus one, plus one. Whenever you cast a legendary spell, create a 2-2 two, two white knight creature token with vigilance. Which, of course, will get buffed to a 3-3. And then three colors and one white to create a 2 2 white knight creature token with vigilance. Is it any good though? Okay, so let's say I drop a knight down on turn one. This is probably what the knights decks want to do. They want to have very many one drops. <laughs> very, very many. Like, I don't know, 16 or 20 one drops if they can. Uh, and then two one drops on turn two. If I have that, I have three knights, so this will cost three, so I can on my turn three then play Circle of Loyalty. Buff up all my knights. Yeah, this is probably good, honestly, in a knight deck, because this is what they want to do. I think there are some expensive knights, uh, which you're not going to have a look at, because I think most of them are shit, to be honest. And they don't play well into the knight strategy. I think the knight strategy is more like a white weenie type strategy, I think that's how it should be played, with a new enchantment, whenever you attack in, this one damage, you gain one life, things like that, and very, very cheap things. Uh, because if you go on too long in standard right now, there's so many ways of, you know, controlling the board, gaining control of every, <laughs> mind controlling every knight, or uh, board sweeping, or whatever, and they can't really come back from that. I mean, knights are not, they're not good at drawing cards, they're good at, you know, having good attack power. Uh, so I think they should be on the board early, and I think a Circle of Loyalty works good well with that. So I think it's probably a one-off in every night deck, probably, from what it seems like. Because it seems like exactly what they want to do. Like, drop knight, drop knight, drop knight, buff knight. <laughs> That's what they want to do. Again, again, again. Uh, and then when you play cast a legendary spell, create a 2-2 two, two white knight. I haven't seen too many legends knight that they want to play. I mean, there's a 6-mana card. But I think it's too expensive in the knight deck. I think it's too gimmicky. I think it's more made for brawl, that card. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. But it is creatures you control, so you might have other creatures. Nah, I don't see that. It still just goes one less for each knight, so you probably only want to have knights in the deck. Yeah, I think it's a solid card, and it works probably well in the knight archetype, I would say. Oh, here we have Sputnik and Putin. <laughs> Something I can't read Russian. But I have the translation here. As it so happens, plus one, draw a card, then discard a card. Mm -hmm. Then it has another plus one. Target creature gets plus two, plus zero, and gains first strike and trample until end of turn. 
Mm, okay. Minus eight, draw four cards. When you do, Royal Science deals damage to any target equal to the number of cards in your hand. So this is very, very good. Because you can probably deal like seven damage and draw, you know, draw four cards, which is of course amazing. Uh, so the ultimate is good, uh, even for a three mana Planeswalker, because this three mana is quite cheap. And you can get this out on turn two if you want to with like a Lawn Relf or something. The thing is, with this card, it doesn't do much if you get it down early. Like, if you compare this to uh, getting down a Teferi Time Raveler early, or getting down a Chandra early, that can really swing the game around. If you get this down on turn 2, for instance, I mean, what can you do? You can buff your Lawn Well for just to do anything. You can draw and discard a card. <laughs> it doesn't do anything, in my opinion. Um, if you put this down on turn 3, uh, and you have a 2-drop, what could that 2-drop be which you could want to give? Uh, let's say you have like a football or something. Turn 3, you play this. Can I attack in? Can I first strike? Uh, probably won't matter. Maybe with flyers, like with the, you know, the Drake archetype, which I think is what this is meant for, right? Uh, like, put, a, put down a Pteramander or something. Something small, and then you attack in, you get plus two, you get first strike and trample, and then you attack into some planeswalker, maybe at the fairy time rav or something in the air, but you could probably have killed him anyways. I think that this is not super good, it would be my uh, initial. Uh, statement on this even though the ultimate is pretty good i mean it's gonna take so long it's gonna take three pluses and magic is a game where every turn everything you know can change <laughs> very drastic in one turn like can be a completely different board state after one turn um so i don't know about this card i don't know the thing is like this it might suit some deck like one deck very well, maybe like some Drake style deck or something like that. But it's not like the it's not like the fairy time level, which is like this is good in any deck. <laughs> this is like what every deck wants. Uh, this this is not what every deck wants. This is what very specific decks want, and I think that's probably better designed <laughs> when you think about it. But uh, I can't really come up with something like oh, if you put this card in this deck, then it will you know be a completely different thing. It will be so much stronger with this don't really see it <laughs> but if you see it then leave a comment down below maybe there's some combo with this maybe there's some tricks in us let me know tomb raider yeah i included this just because it says tomb raider <laughs> tome tomb i want to say wow why is it tomb and tome i thought about that english weird anywho uh, flying when tome raider enters the battlefield draw a card uh we already have a card which does Essentially this, but better, because it's a 2-1, which is much, much better stats for 3 mana. It's an elemental, so it triggers all the elemental stuff. Uh, from what I've seen from fairies so far, they don't seem super strong. They don't seem like they were in Lorwyn. In Lorwyn, they got super good cards. It seems like they um, realized that if you, you shouldn't give the best abilities probably to the flying tribe. <laughs> probably. Uh, so, so far they haven't really gotten that much. But maybe later down the line they will get something. And if they have enough support, then maybe, maybe, maybe this will see play. But it seems a little horrible. Next card. Turn into a pumpkin. <laughs> is it being, it is being turned into a pumpkin. Well, there's some uh, unique opportunities for names, at least, in this set. I think Magic the Gathering is probably gonna run out of names at some point, and it's all gonna be, like, Eldraine sets, where it's, like, some weird theme where, like, we can use weird lingo. Anyways, turn into a pumpkin. Instant return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand and draw a card. Non-land permanent. Uh... And draw a card. So this is very similar. We have a mana a card which costs two, which can return a non-land permanent to its owner's hand. And then it has an alternate mode if you play two extra, which can draw a card. So that uh, seems better right now. But we also have adamant here. If at least three blue mana was spent to cost a spell, create a food token. Yeah, it's again. How much will we need the food? The food is such a tricky thing to talk about. How valuable is it to get food? Uh, because we don't know yet. We don't know how many effects there are that stack with foods. We, you kind of have to build the deck to see 
how important food is and the no need to add more food producers or not. Uh, if it's a big thing, then this might see play because it's decent removal. It bounces something, it draws a card, it's instant speed and it creates a food. Uh, but if that food is largely irrelevant, then something like Callus's Missile is probably just always bad. I mean, Callus's Missile is good because it's two mana, and this is four mana. And usually, four mana bounce effects are quite crap, honestly, because it's way, way too costly to pay four mana for it. But it's also an instant, so we'll see. We'll see. Wicked Wolf. Two colors and two green. When Wicked Wolf enters the battlefield, it fights up to one target creature you don't control. Okay. 3-3 three, three, which can fight something, I uh, can fight a few things and kill them I guess. Sacrifice a food, put a plus one plus one counter on Wicked Wolf, it gains indestructible until end of turn. Tap it. So here we have a guy who can probably survive a lot. Uh, the thing is when the fight is on the stack you can sacrifice that food and make it a 4-4 four, four and fight something else. And as long as you have food it's very hard to get rid of. Kind of. <laughs> kind of very hard to get rid of. Uh, but the thing is, you can also... Mm, you need to tap it, though. We have a Lich where we can pay for life, and it's like a 4-3 or something, which has a stronger effect, and it sees no play. Uh, it sees no play. Probably this will not see play, I would say. Uh, but the thing is that it can fight something. Is If that fighting ability is relevant enough, if there's enough small creatures, which we're kind of led to believe, there's small fairies, there's small knights, there's mono red, uh, vampires are gonna rotate, uh, there's elementals, can probably get some uh, kills there. Then this might just be, you know, an upgrade to Ravenous Chupacabra, like a green Ravenous Chupacabra. And if the food is also relevant, and if there's a lot of destroy, if there's not that many sacrifice, if you think about it, most things destroy now if it is removal, I would say. Uh, so indestructible is very, very relevant. And it can also protect against wrath effects and stuff like that, which you couldn't before. And Or you could play this yourself if you want to play like this with Kai's Wrath or something. Uh, you could have this down and then Kai's Wrath over it and it's safe and you can have this with Gideon or something. That could be a cool deck. Mm. Maybe. Maybe decently good even. Maybe. I want to believe. <laughs> I want to believe in this card. Wish Claw Talisman. One colors and one black. Wish Claw Talisman, Talisman enters the battlefield with three wish counters on it. Okay, remove a wish counter from Wish Claw Talisman. Search your library for a card. Put that card into your hand. Then shuffle your library. An opponent gains control of Wishclaw Talisman, activates its ability only during your turn. Is it any good though? Mm, maybe. The thing is, the only deck which could afford playing something like this is a combo deck, a real combo deck, like something like Kethys or something, uh, which wants to find one of their pieces. So you put this on for two. And then remove a wish counter, and your opponent will be able to do this himself, but he will give it back if he does that. And let's say you put this down, you search for Kethys or whatever you need to enable your combo. It depends, if you can go off with a combo immediately, then it might be worth a wish claw talisman. But the thing is, we already have a thing which can search, and your opponent can search for something. Uh, but that's a little bit more tricky. Scheming Symmetry is card name, I think. It's a little bit more tricky to get that off. This seems easier to get off than Scheming Symmetry. It's easier to build around. And your opponent is kind of incentivized not to use his part, because if he uses it, then you will get to search for yet another combo piece. And he probably doesn't want that, so he probably doesn't want to use Wish Claw Talisman, because it will give it back again. Um, for most decks, though, Searching for a specific thing is not that valuable right now in standard because the while the power level is high, there's no there's very few things where like if you get these two cards together you win or something like that, which exists in like modern and legacy and stuff like that. There's very few things like that, probably intentionally, <laughs> intentionally in standard right now. Uh, so it doesn't really seem super powerful. 
But on the other hand, if you use this just for the value, just think about this. If you use this for the value, you put this down for two. Next turn, you remove a wish counter, you search for something. Just for the value. And your opponent will search for one card. And then you will get to search for one more card again. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, your opponent is losing out because you are getting two things from this. But he's getting one thing. Is it worth it? What deck would even have time to do this, though? Tap one mana here, one mana there. Maybe if you couple this with green or something. You have a lot of mana dorks and you can search for really, really good targets with the Wishclaw Talisman. This is an interesting card. Man, I like the designer. I really I mean, I did like Skimming Symmetry and it's on no place. So it doesn't mean that the card is good. It just means that it makes me think. And that I like. It's my dingus brain. <laughs> it's some exercise from time to time. <laughs> yeah, I will brew around this. But I brew around everything, so that doesn't say anything. <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay. Creatures of the creature type you choose of your choice. Get minus three, minus three until end of turn. We need a sip for this. A little bit of a sip. Mm. Mono black. Is it back? Okay, so we have to analyze this. One colorless, two black sorcery. Sorcery speed. It's usually sorcery speed, so uh, we have to make do with that. So the this is both good and bad. The bad part, of course, is that you choose a creature type, and it's not every creature type. So if your opponent has various creature types, on his board, then it won't do much. It's very good against elementals, goes without saying. It even kills the Nissa tokens. <laughs> very, very good with that. Mm. What other things? It's against Mono Red, there's a couple of wizards actually in Mono Red, so it might get off a pretty good Witch's Vengeance versus uh, the Or Elemental could also work against. Uh, if we think other decks, the Knight deck would probably get completely hosted by Witch's Vengeance. Um, because everything has to be a knight in that deck, so it's probably pretty good. Uh, the fairies, I don't know if fairies would be a thing. They haven't looked even strong right now, so maybe it will be a little tribe. I don't know. Or maybe it will be the strongest ever, because they print some cards. <laughs> Later down the line, I will have to eat my words up. Or something. Uh, so that's good. You can clear one creature type, and you don't necessarily clear, clear your own type. So if you have some rare tribe... That nobody else has. Or if you have, you know, various creatures like, you know, Fable Up with a Callousis Missile, you know, like, you know, like I like to play things. A long welfare in there. Uh, it would probably not clear your things, but it will clear your opponent's things. And that is quite good, honestly. That is quite good. Uh, it would probably see play, I would say. Uh, but it's very, it's very meta dependent card. So, how good are these tribes gonna be? Probably gonna be quite good. I think the knights have. The most potential, I would say, right now. Cheap knights. I mean, it, it seems like we've seen that strategy before and it has always worked. <laughs> it's like mono white and uh, kind of like the new mono red thing where you play the uh, thing where whenever you attack in something with power one or less attacks in, it deals one damage to a player or planeswalker. That kind of thing. It seems like it has always worked and it will always work. So it, knights seems like a safe bet. Um... Elementals will, of course, be a thing after rotations, be, will even be stronger, probably. Uh, it will not do anything against, or will not be good, I would say, against Simic Flash, though. And Simic Flash, I think, I'm a little bit afraid that it will be too good after rotation. Uh, so that I'm a little bit afraid of. Against Scapeshift, you can clear all the Scapeshift tokens, which is sweet. Um, against Catis, it can't kill Catis. You will probably lose. I mean, most decks are not super good against Catis, but it's a very, very special deck. Uh, yeah, it has some applications. It will probably see play. Is my consensus on this card. Okay. <laughs> Two cards which went away for some reason. Oh, maybe I deleted them. Maybe they weren't so good. Brimstone Trebuchet. Two colors and one red. Defender Reach. This looks like a shit card, why did I keep this? So, Trebuchet deals one damage to each opponent. Whenever a knight enters the battlefield under your control, untap the Trebuchet. I think it's a, you know, cute thing, very thematic, everything. 
but it seems very, very shit, honestly. <laughs> very, very shit. Okay, Patrulliera del Carval Hadia. Uh, something. Squirrel guy. <laughs> That's what it means. Oh, no, it's a fox. <laughs> fox guy! What it says. Fox guy. Uh, fox guy is an elf, Cavaliero. And uh, when you can pay... Let's see here. You can pay four mana to create two one ones. Two one one humans. Uh, or you can tap this creature and all your creatures get plus one plus one. Until end of turn. Finale do turno. <laughs> Has to be until end of turn. Right! Right! <laughs> um, is this any good? It has horrible stats. It's a 2 2. It creates. Two one ones for four mana. Everything about this seems very, very weak. Uh, I don't even know why I, have, I kept it there. Maybe because it's a cute fox or something. <laughs> Anyways, Doom Foretold. Two colors, one white, one black. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player sacrifices a non land, non token, permanent. Non land, non token, okay. If that player can't. Then they discard a card, they lose to life, you draw a card, you gain two life, you create a 2-2, two -two white knight, <laughs> again, a fedora knight, okay, with vigilance, then you sacrifice doom foretold. Then you sacrifice doom foretold. So the best, this is a weird card. So what you want to do with this, of course, you want to play it against... Let's say I play this against Control Deck, who has no permanence out. It does almost nothing. Uh, they will immediately not be having any non-token, non-land permanence. So they will discard a card, lose two life, and you will draw a card and you gain two life. This is essentially what we do with the, the blue-black enchantment right now for three mana. So it's not super good, except for you get a little bit of life and a 2-2. Uh, it's not super good against control. Uh, if you're up against an aggressive deck like Mono Red, for instance, let's say Mono Red, and they have two creatures down, and you drop down Doom Foretold, they will immediately have to sacrifice one creature, and next turn they will have to sacrifice one creature, or they will have to wait two turns to get rid of Doom Foretold. But the thing is, you also have to put down things, because if you don't put down things, you will have to discard. <laughs> um, you can sacrifice anything though. You can sacrifice food, for instance. So if you have some kind of weird deck which has a lot of permanents which it wants to kill, for instance, mm -mm -mm, I think we have something here. Uh, for instance, you could run Doom Foretold with there's a uh, artifact for three, which when it goes to the graveyard. It deals three damage to any or five damage to any target. So let's say you play that on turn three, then you play Doom Foretold, and your opponent sacrifices something, you sacrifice that, you either deal damage to their face or you deal damage to something on their board or whatever. Uh, and then you just put down another one. And you just put down another one, another one, and another one. And you just keep putting down those. I mean you maybe have one or two or something in your hand. But it could be pretty good with a strategy like that. So if you have a lot of things which you yourself want to sacrifice. It could work. Uh, the problem with this card is that it depends on your opponent, and that's why I think why I think it won't work really that well. Because if you're up against a control deck, you don't get that much value, unless you can utilize that knight, for instance, to do something. Uh, it doesn't seem super powerful, but it's very good against like decks which just flood the board with creatures and it just eats up one creature every goddamn turn from them until at some point. Uh, they're out of creatures. But that seems pretty good. You can also bring this back with brought back and do not the nonsense like that. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, the, when it's not good against every deck. I mean, we have cards like that. We have like removal cards and kind of, this is kind of like removal. I remember there was a card. Oh, what was that card? It's a card which. I think it costs one mana or something, and everyone needs to sacrifice a creature. That was pretty cool. I don't remember what that was called, an old card. Anyways. Embercleave. 
Four colors and two red flash. This spell costs one less to cast for each attacking creature you control. Okay, for each attacking creature you control. Oh, it has flash. Okay, okay, okay. Now I understand. When Embercleave enters the battlefield, attach it to target creature you control. That's good. That's very, very good. So let's say I have... For instance, I have a white-red knight deck. I have three knights down. It is my turn three. And I attack in with them. And then I play Embercleave, and I can attach it to a target, one of my knights. Uh, my knights will probably be... Uh, at this point, they will be two ones. Something like that. Uh, a crit creature gets plus one, plus one, and has double tracks, so it will become a three, two, and it will deal six damage. Um, mm. And then you need to re-equip it. The thing is that the equip cost is quite expensive here with three. This would have been like... It, it should have like equip knight one or something. Uh, I don't know. Maybe there's some tricks in us if you don't, because you don't need knights for this. Uh, it's just that the knights seem to fit perfectly into this, this kind of thing where you just flood down, you put down a lot of small creatures. But if you, this is something which has very high power. I mean, the, the dream scenario would be like the dinosaur or something. The seven uh, six dinosaur put this on and it becomes like eight. Eight, seven, uh, tra well, first strike and trample, and you just kill your opponent. It's very nice that it has trample, I, I must say. It seems a little bit gimmicky, a little bit random. You're gonna get some, you know, random wins from this if you run this, probably. But the thing which it goes best with, which is small creatures, doesn't matter too much if they have double strike, because they deal too little damage anyways. It's a little bit gimmicky, but cool. Cool car. Cool car, definitely. Enchanted Carriage. When Enchanted Carriage enters the battlefield, create two 1-1 one, one white mouse creature tokens. <laughs> this is to get more female players, of course. <laughs> well, ladies, if you're watching this, you can also regain your virginity very easily by playing this game. Just, just a small tip. Uh, crew 2. Oh... Oh, this is the cutest thing I ever saw, and the mouse is cruised to the carriage. Why is it so bad, though? Why is it just a 4-4? Four four? Oh, because it has four wheels or something? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Couldn't have been a little bit stronger? Because if someone if someone puts down a fairy time raveler and just bounces one of the mouses, then the single mouse is not enough to crew it. <laughs> and you... Your enchanted carriage won't do anything. I mean, even if it can attack in, it is still horrible because it's just a 4-4. Four -four. So everything about this is horrible, but, uh, you know, it's cute. <laughs> Something. Fairy Guide Mother. One white and Gift of the Fae. Sorcery. Target creature you control gets plus 2, plus 1 and gains flying until end of turn and flying. This card... I would actually say it's good. Why is it good? It's good for a couple of reasons. First off, it's a 1-1 one, one flying for 1, which is decent, but having the gift of the fae here, I think puts this girl over the top here. So, if this works as I think, and you can run this with, for instance, um, <laughs> the card that I just forgot the name of, uh, an enchantment which draws your card whenever you target your own creatures with a spell, and it discounts as a spell, then this seems like the ideal kind of creature to have in a deck like that. And I already ran a deck like that with the troll uh, and everything, if you saw that video. And it's very... It could be very strong. And I think cards like this could make it even stronger. Especially if the white put this in, have Gift of the Fae, so that you both have a creature. Because the problem with uh, Season Growth is what it's called. But the problem with Season Growth now is that sometimes you find only the creature, sometimes you find only the buff, and you need to have both. And this has both in the same creature, which I think makes it very, very good. Next card. Frogify. One colorless and one blue. Enchanted creature. Enchanted creature. Enchanted creature loses all abilities. And it's a blue frog with base power and toughness. One. Oh. Oh. And remember we had Pogify. Uh, it was one blue. 
Exile target creature and its owners create a 3-3 frog. Um, this, by the way, will never see play. We already have a card like this and it never sees play. But, it's, you know, it's cute and everything. I don't know why they not printed this at common. It does seem very, very horrible in every way. But, uh, yeah. Cool art, at least. <laughs> a little bit wasted on this card, but cool. Giant killer. One white. A human peasant. It's a rare, even. Okay. It can tap target creature. We already have a creature like that, and it sometimes sees play, but very, very rarely. And then it has chop down, instant adventure, destroy target creature with power 4 or greater. Weirdly enough, this might see play. I don't think it will. It's very meta dependent. But the thing is that you can both have it if you need something early. You can have it down and you can tap something. Or if you draw it late. It might be very relevant to be able to chop down. Probably not. But again, meta dependent, probably not, but it might see play. Midnight clock. Two colors and one blue. Add. Oh, it can add one blue. So, okay, so it's a ramp. Ramp card for blue. That's interesting, which is an artifact also. Oh, okay. Two colors and one blue. Put an hour counter on midnight clock. At the beginning of each upkeep, put an hour counter on midnight clock. Okay. When the 12th hour counter is put on Midnight Clock, shuffle your hand and graveyard into your library, then draw 7 cards, exile Midnight Clock. At the beginning of each upkeep. Okay, okay, each copy. So you and your opponent. So 6 turns <laughs> to get this guy off. Okay, so initially, if you're going for that 12th our counter thing, it's gonna be horrible, I think. Because it's just gonna get bounced by the Fred Hammer, it's gonna be get killed, you're never gonna get there, you're gonna get killed before you get there. But if you use this for the mana ramp, if you have a deck where three mana, if you have like a mono blue deck which wants to ramp in, a, in an artifact deck, kind of like a deck like I created uh, earlier, if you saw that video, uh, it could definitely go into a deck like that. And uh, if you, for some reason, have an insane amount of mana, you can just dump all into the Midnight Clock. Uh, get it off a little bit earlier, and in most cases, you're just gonna use it as a mana ramp. If you're ramping in something. Uh, you could also use this with the, like, turn 1, Lawn Ralph, turn 2, Midnight Clock, or something. Uh, it could sit around there and threaten the 12th hour counter, and your opponent has to deal with it. Uh, sure, it's very, 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 very slow, but, you know, if you, in the meantime, just use it for the manas, you'll be getting some use out of it. Might not be horrible. Might not be horrible. We'll see. Uh, very niche in very few decks, but could work. Next card. Murderous Rider. One colorless, two black. Uh, Swift End. One colorless, two black. Instant Adventure. Destroy target creature or, pla or Planeswalker. You lose two life. What the wreck? <laughs> this is a good card. Was not expecting this. Or Planeswalker, okay, so it's good against essentially everything. You lose two life, it's the bad part of this. But, you're supposed to get it back, of course. Lifelink, when Murder's Rider dies, put it on the bottom of its owner's library. I don't know why the bottom of owner's library even matters, but... This seems good. It seems like a really, really good black card, honestly. Just have this for the removal part. Instead of uh, Raska's Contempt, you run this. You just swift end a couple of turns, and then you start regaining with Murderous Riders. And it goes well with the Cavalier of Night, because the Cavalier of Night can return the Murderous Rider when, um, when it dies. Yeah, I like this card. I really like this card. Of course, the body is weak. You don't want to play the Murderous Rider, really. <laughs> I mean, you don't want to play it for its normal mana, but you want to use swift end. It's probably going to sit in your hand for a long time. You're just going to wait to swift end. You're not going to want to play it out unless it has been on its adventure, you know. Uh, but the adventure is strong. A little bit unfortunate with the you lose two life thing there, which makes it not super good against mono red, which might be a factor for it maybe not seeing as much play, but a uh, really cool design, cool card. I like it. Next card. Mystical Dispute. Two colors and one blue. This spell costs two less to cost if it targets a blue Spell. Okay, so probably a counter spell. A canooter! An anti canooter! Yes! <laughs> it's what we're talking about. Counter target spell unless controller pays three. 
Okay, so a three mana counter, which doesn't always count as always, 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 always been bad. <laughs> Every single time. I think. I, don't, I can't recall a single three mana counter where it was conditional and still strong. Uh, unless it made itself cheaper. Like, like if you have a wizard, it costs less or something like that. But it doesn't. It only targets a blue spell that it costs less. So probably not. I would like to have seen this for two, man. Nah, then we'd just have been mana leak. <laughs> it's just been a strictly better mana leak. Um, and that would probably have been too good. Yeah, I don't know why we could have balanced this. And I don't really particularly like counter spells, so maybe it's good that it's a little bit shit. <laughs> maybe that's for the better. <laughs> once upon a time. Ooh, they haven't printed a card named Once Upon a Time before? Yeah, probably probably not. <laughs> probably not. Probably this card is evidence that they haven't. One colors, one green. If this spell is the first spell you've cast this game, you may cast it without paying its mana cost. This is very unique. This is probably gonna impact other formats also. Like, if you want to build up Storm Count or something, play this card. Uh, look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal a creature or land card from among them and put that card into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Okay, five cards, creature or land. Put the card into your hand. This is very good in a creature deck, I would say. It's very good in a creature deck. The reason is, you don't want to cost it for two. No, it's over costed for two. It should have cost one green. Uh, but, for instance, let's say you're once upon a time, and you have one land in hand. You know that you can cast once upon a time immediately. You can even cast it during your opponent's turn. <laughs> you can cast it during their upkeep, uh, before they put down their first land. <laughs> so that they can't counter once upon a time or something. Uh, you search for a land, and then you've essentially saved your hand. Or, you have, let's say you have, you've flooded out a little bit, you have uh, four lands and a once upon a time. And then that can find some kind of creature that can get to you somewhere. Uh, you need to have creatures, of course, a lot of creatures in your deck. But if you have that, this is probably a good card, honestly. Probably a good card. Anything that you can play for free is usually m much stronger than it seems. Historically, that's been the case, at least. Uh, so yeah, I think this even has application in older formats where like, things like Storm Count uh, is relevant. Next card. Piper of the Swarm. Okay. One colors and one black. Rats you control have Menace. <laughs> okay, so it's, it's for that uh, rat which can have any number of, probably, to build with that deck. Uh, one colors... Oh, so you can make it mono black. You don't need splash blue anymore for... Uh, I don't know what Tetsuko Misawa, I think was the name. Uh, one black and one colorless. Create a 1-1 one, one black rat creature token. Okay, that's very, very expensive. Or two colorless and two black. Sacrifice three rats. Gain control of target creature. That's also very, very, very expensive. Um, this seems very gimmicky and bad, initially. Uh, of course, yes, it goes into that rat deck, you know, but that deck has never been a serious deck. I mean, it may be in pauper, but this can't be played in pauper. They could have printed it as common, and then it could have been played in pauper. That would be pretty cool in pauper. <laughs> but now it can't. Uh, so if you compare this to, for instance, there's a black card where you can sacrifice two creatures, and your opponent uh, has to sacrifice a creature, and you draw a card and you gain two black mana. That's a very strong effect. And you don't even need to pay mana for that to activate it. Uh, here you need to pay mana. Of course you don't need to have a specific board state to be able to create a black rat. But putting this down and creating a black rat. You've essentially really not done anything on the board. <laughs> you can just as easily... What if your opponent just bounces the rat? They put down the fairy time raveler. They bounce the rat. Now you've essentially played four mana, you wasted two turns, and you've done nothing. You've done absolutely nothing. Uh, getting the three rats, you must have then spent six mana to get the rats, and four mana. So you have spent ten mana, and all you've achieved is taking over one creature. You could have just splashed blue, and uh, yeah. Cool concept. They should have definitely printed this as common, and they should have given to you to all the poker players. 
It wouldn't have broken the format, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure it wouldn't. Um, <laughs> maybe this becomes super popular. <laughs> I would be so ashamed that I didn't, that I didn't see the potential in Piper of the Swarm. We'll see though. Uh, probably not. Questing Beast. We're back! We're back! We've done all the cards! There were some really sweet cards, I think. Uh, one of them, probably the Questing Beast. Uh, I think there were some stronger there. I don't remember exactly which cards I liked the most. I'm gonna do some more. Like when we have all the spoilers, I'm gonna have a look at like specific combos and stuff like that. Uh, cute things you can do. So stay tuned for that. Thanks so much for watching. And see you next time. <laughs> Shout out. <laughs> Shout out. <laughs> thank you so much everyone so much for watching and a special thank you of course to our dear members blue dragon own 77 adam alexis ramen noodles for me magic pistol man simon lauer rodney cox herman m agony reborn the soft Pillow, Sneak, Luria Stars, Michael Aglar, Shamanix, Spencer Hopsty, Alex Mikev, Nathaniel Nisser, Lasers at the Sun, uh, Eric0234, Jeff Henry, Ellie Curtis, Leaning Into It, Santa John, Michael Yu, Pocky Yu, Michael W, that is Pocky Yu, Matthias Pauli, Toplets Investments, Kronos1107, W Lutes1978, P, Peter Gold, Bora Raw, Strange Brontides, Sean Stevens, Gabriel Juvenal, Tandex, Smog JC, Marcus Rutledge, Tim Stokes, Wiza, QD Lated23, Brian Gutierrez, Amano84, Seth Hickok, Way, Ian Cusack, Walker Floren, Mesomok1, Ye Old Basses, Dingo Scrub, Orion SSFL, Crew the Barbarian, Link is Weak, Nicholas Zanotti, Rainbow 2002, 40k Television, Acros Ascending, July Moonlight Star, Slim Jimothy, Donkey Kong, Timothy, Callus Dismissal, that's a good one. <laughs> Ventum Tantum, uh, David Newman, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, X Covenant X, Rainbow Cake, Betsuma, Brandon Dobbs, Magneto, Serge Karamarov, Pote, Wonderbread, Drew Styles, Aaron Noble, Kip Kusner, Dan Goodsell, Joff Jorger, Carlo Palumbo, Freeman Stephenson, DBK Drummer, and Piotr Stolarzysk. <laughs> you guys are amazing. <laughs> If you also want to become a Dark Disciple, help rule the underworld and all that jazz, then either check out my Patreon, link in the description, or check out the Join button next to the Subscribe button. Thanks so much for watching, and see you next time. Also, thank you to the batch of this on Patreon. <laughs> and don't forget to subscribe. <laughs>